Hello everyone, I'm Ken Miller, Product Director at Pan Intelligence. I'm going to take you through something that people keep asking me about and explain how analytics works and what it can do for you. So people have lots and lots of data out there, but how do we mine it appropriately? And how do we find out the solutions and how do we predict people's behaviour? Using a simple model, I'm going to explain it to you now. I'm going to use a, a business problem that I have at work to help you understand exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about analytics. At work, we have a tennis table. This is Mike. One thing you need to know is Mike is my boss. Mike is much better at me than ten table tennis. And Mike has been boasting relentlessly about being better than me at table tennis. My problem is I need to beat Mike. The other thing you really need to know is this isn't just made up data. Mike is real. This is Mike. So I can start to collect some stats about Mike and how he plays table tennis. So I can see exactly how often and where he places the ball when he plays a shot. What this allows me to do is build a very simple data set and would allow me to build a dashboard over this data. So what does this dashboard tell me? This dashboard tells me that 42% of the time, Mike's gonna hit the shot to the right and the back of the court. Using that data, I could decide and sit and wait and receive shots at the right and the back of the court. I would now return 42% of the shots, but being a mathematician, I know that I now fail to return 58% of the shots. I'm still going to lose the game. And what's worse, Mike's going to actually, actually notice that I'm just standing in one place waiting to receive those shots anyway. So how am I going to get over this? I'm going to practice. Now, when I practice, I subconsciously record Mike's movements. So every time he plays a shot against me, I'm recording that data. The more I practice, the more my brain records these characteristics and the outcomes in Mike's play. And I start to build a data set and a model that I can use to predict where Mike will play the ball. Here's the first characteristic. Where are Mike's eyes looking? So when his eyes are looking forward, I can collect the data and see exactly where he's playing that ball. I can also then take a look and when his eyes are to the left, I can see a similar data set, but this time where the ball is played front, back, left and right again. And then when his eyes are facing towards the right, again, another data set. Now, the first thing to note here is the characteristic is where Mike's eyes are pointing. And the second of the outcomes are the, the data that I'm measuring. So as Mike continues to play shots against me, I'm recording this data and recording those outcomes. I can also bring in to this other characteristic. So is Mike playing a forehand or is Mike playing a, a backhand? And again, each one of those characteristics will have its own outcome data. So again, we have a characteristic and a set of outcomes that we're gonna measure. I can take another characteristic here. So is Mike standing on the left or is he standing on the right hand side of the court? And again, I build a data set showing exactly where the ball is gonna be placed based on whether he stood to the left or the right of the court. Again, characteristic and those measured outcomes from the data. So I can now use this data to analyze how Mike is gonna play a shot. So in the instant that the ball is struck, I observed the characteristics. So if we have a look at Mike here, his eyes are pointing to the right. He's playing a forehand and he's stood to the left as I look at him. Each one of those individual characteristics has its own data set from the data I measured earlier. What I can now do is I can analyze those shots together and create a model which matches the data overall. And I can see that now, based on this shot, I should move to the back and the right. And 54% of the time, Mike's gonna play the shot there. I can use this model to predict each individual shot now that Mike's gonna play against me. So on the left, I can see that I should be standing to the back and the right. The shot in the middle, I should be standing at the left and back. And although the model's not quite so predictive, it's telling me still my best chance of returning that shot is expect Mike to, to uh, hit it short and to the left-hand side of the court. This is okay, but as we can see here, there's still some shots which are quite hard to predict. And what essentially I've built there is, is what we call a decision tree. And that decision tree allows me to evaluate these characteristics in turn and each time come up with the best place to stand based on that shot. As I said earlier, Mike's been bragging. What I don't want to do is just narrowly meet Mike. I want to leave nothing to chance. I want to make sure I really thump him at the game. So I'm going to improve that model by practicing more. And by practicing more, all I'm doing is collecting more data. The more I practice, the more my brain records those characteristics and outcomes in, in Mike's play. And this allows me to build a more accurate or a more sophisticated model. So I can start to include more characteristics. So I might to notice, notice things like the angle of the bat. I might notice where the ball strikes the bat. I might notice subtle differences in Mike's body position. 
And also as I start to beat Mike, Mike's going to start to become quite emotional. So I can start to take into account changes in Mike's facial expressions. So obviously he's going to get very upset as I start to beat him. And what I do is I build a much smarter model around this. So I use a technique called logistic regression to generate a scorecard. Each characteristic is given a score and the score is then added up for each shot. The overall score is then applied to create a probability for each shot. And we create a model, in this case, for each quadrant on the table so we can predict the probability that the ball will be returned there. And the reason we know this works is we've used this in many industries to date. But I can now create a very sophisticated model here. So this particular shot, I would be able to accurately tell that 73% of the time that Mike's going to drop the ball short and place it onto the right-hand side of the court. I can now beat Mike. The important thing is I get the bragging rights over Mike now. If only I could load that model into my brain. I can't take that shortcut. Unfortunately, with ping pong, what I have to do is I have to practice. I have to train my brain. So if this won't help me at table tennis yet, how can we use this? So let's consider a really simple real world problem. When a student enrolls in a college, how do we predict their probability of success? And we do exactly what I've just explained with the model here. We collect data. We're already collecting lots and lots of data, but we take a look and we use the characteristics within that data and we try and work out the probability of success. Better still, we should be able to use that data to intervene and improve their outcome. So those students with a low chance of success, what are the, what are the indications and what are the things that we can do which will help uplift their score and make them, make them better? And also, what happens if we take this data out of the hands of statisticians and put it in the hands of people who really understand the students? So the faculty managers, the lecturers, the students themselves, how do we actually improve their behaviour by communicating that data to them? And what we do is we build a predictive model which outputs that data into a simple, readily consumable tool like a dashboard. In summary, really, the evolution of BI for us. When we first started in the world of business intelligence, reports were scheduled and printed and emailed. What we started to move towards with dashboarding was real-time self-service data so people could get their hands on the data that they wanted at any time. What we now want to move towards is integrated predictive analytics, smart systems targeted at taking corrective actions and putting the citizen in charge, so really encapsulating this phrase of citizen data scientist. And the reason we need to do this is firstly, there's not enough statisticians out of there, but better decisions can be also made by people who really understand the business. So if we give those pointers, those cues to people who understand what's actually happening at the ground level, they're able to take quick corrective actions. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found it really useful and you've got some ideas about what you could do with your data. If so, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to get in touch. We're here at Pan Intelligence.